Congratulations. At this point, you should have a functional working copy of Brownie you can work with for this tutorial. If you don't have Brownie working, check out the previous tutorial or contact anybody in the Brownie community and we will be happy to help you. If you do have a copy of Brownie, let's begin. This lesson is going to cover initializing a new Brownie project, the structure of a Brownie project, creating a Brownie project from a mix, and basics of interacting with your Brownie project. Creating a Brownie project is actually even easier than installing. Within my Brownie directory, I'm going to create a directory for a new project. And within it, all I need to do to start a new Brownie project is type Brownie init, short for initialize. And just like that, we have the framework of a new Brownie project. This is the skeletal outline of what every Brownie project should look like. You can see it's automatically created six folders. All of them are blank. The structure of a Brownie project is as follows. The contracts folder is where you're going to have your contract. This could be Solidity or Viper. If it's .sol, it's presumed to be Solidity. If it's .vy, it's presumed to be Viper. Within interfaces, you're going to keep the very basic interface sources. So these can be referenced by other contract sources, but they're not the primary components of your project. Again, these can be in solidity.sol or viper.vy. The scripts folder is going to hold the Python scripts used for deploying the contracts or to automate any common tasks or interactions. And the tests is where you'll write your unit tests. When you type brownie test, it's going to assume that your tests are in the test folder, and it's going to use the PyTest framework for unit testing. We also see a reports and a build folder. Brownie will use this to generate files automatically, build for compiler artifacts and unit test results, and reports for some JSON files that will be used in the GUI. You don't need to put anything in these. They're just useful to have. So it was incredibly easy to create a new Brownie project. But let's take a look at some existing Brownie projects that we can use within our smart contract template. If you visit github.com slash Brownie mix, you'll see a variety of pre-approved templates. Many of these are very, very useful. For example, React Mix is a very bare bones implementation of the Create React app that will work directly with Brownie. You can use it as a starting point for building a front end for your DAP or GitHub Actions. If you're planning on open sourcing your contract, you'll want to make sure that your GitHub repository is supporting continuous integration and other useful tools. GitHub Actions will create a very basic framework to do this. For our case, we're going to work with token. Token is a very bare bones ERC20 token template. You'll note that there's Viper token and token. In this case, we'll just use the token mix that's written in Solidity. So I'm creating a new subfolder to contain this. create a mix, all you need to do is type brownie, bake, and then the slug from the GitHub repository that you'd like to import. In this case, brownie bake token. And there we go. It's downloaded and created a full working structure within the token directory. You can see here, this has everything that we need the entire structure we discussed previously. There's the contracts folder. Within the contracts folder, in addition to safe math, we have the very basic implementation and solidity of a ERC20 token. We'll be able to check the balance, check the allowance, approve spending, 
transfer funds, everything that we need for a basic token we could use for testing. Interfaces in this case is blank. There's no interfaces we need to work with. There is a full set of tests that we can use to make sure that our ERC20 token is able to handle the basic functionality. Within the scripts folder, there's one single script called token. This is going to have a basic deployment script. Token.deploy test token. It's going to have a symbol TST. By default, it will be 18 decimal places, and we will deploy with 10 to the 21st power from a first account. Finally, it's automatically created the brownie config YAML file. This one's very simple. All this is doing is ex excluding safe math when evaluating test coverage. These brownie config YAML files can be very important and we'll cover them in future units. Let's look at interacting with our basic brownie token. Brownie comes with the full console. It recognizes when we type it in this environment that the token project is our active project. It launches a Ganache local blockchain. By default, it creates 10 accounts that we can work with. When you type accounts, it shows you all the 10 accounts that you have available. Account zero is the one that we're most interested in. We'll be using accounts zero as the deployer of our contract. We saw within the deploy script, very easy to get a token up and running. It's imported token from the contracts file and it's ready to interact with it. So all I need to do is type tokens.deploy. And you will notice We type in the full token deploy script from the deploy. And this has deployed this to my local blockchain at address 0x3194. And I've assigned it to the variable my token. I can now interact with this using the full power of Web3. So my token has a name. You'll notice the console gives a lot of helpful built-in functions. My token is a symbol. I can get some basic information pulled directly from the contract source about my token. If I need to find the address, I can access that as a property. I can even interact directly with my token on my blockchain. For example, the account creator, accounts zero, has one times 10 to the 21st tokens. Unfortunately, poor account one has absolutely none. Why don't we wire some tokens over to account one? We'll send to accounts one. We'll send one times 10 to the 10th. That's not gonna bankrupt us. And this is sent this, mine this is block two on my local blockchain and given me a transaction hash. Now, if I check the accounts, accounts one, a lot richer, and account zero barely moves the bank account. It's good to be generous. As you can see, it's incredibly quick to get started and in interacting with Brownie projects. If you have any questions, please drop them in the chat.
We always like hearing from you. We will see you in the next unit.